for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff up the Mad Cheese as always. Got a different type of video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over zone coverages. I'm going to show you guys what they do, how to best utilize them on defense as far as against the run or pass, and also how to beat them on offense. I'm going to show you guys routes and concepts to beat every single zone coverage in the game. Now, as always, if you guys want to see more tip videos like this, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. I'll make sure to do more videos like this in the future. Other than that, let's, go, let's get right to the video. Now we're gonna start off with the uh, three main types of defensive formations that you can call. Pretty much Tampa two, which is cover two zone, cover three sky, and cover four, which really comes in two different variations. There's a cover four drop, and then there's a cover four quarters or palms, which is like a matching zone coverage type. So first we're gonna focus on the deep zone coverages. The deep zone coverages really are what make the difference between a cover two, a cover three, and a cover four anyway. Typically, uh, these different types of zone coverages are defined by their deep coverages, and they all have their own different strengths and weaknesses, whether you're playing versus the run or pass. Now, in theory, the more deep zone drops you have, the safer you should be against uh, deep passing, but in Madden, that's not necessarily correct. In Madden, there's just as many one-play touchdowns against cover four as there is cover two. So in all reality, it's just whether or not you know these one-play touchdown plays or how to exploit these coverages. But when it comes to run plays, there's definitely a very big difference. When it comes to cover two and cover three especially, these are weaker run defenses based off of what their deep zone drops do compared to cover four drop and even cover four quarters or cover four palms. Because in cover four scenarios, the safeties play the run first before they play the pass. So they're definitely, even though it looks like they're you're playing more safe and you're playing more deep passing, the cover four safeties really play a really important role when it comes to run defense. When it comes to cover three and cover two like this, the deep zones will always drop back first essentially uh, respecting the pass first because they have more responsibility when it comes to pass plays. And you can see that really creates more uh, opportunity for inside runs, whether it's an inside zone or whether it's something like a halfback dive. Any inside run is going to be more successful against cover two and cover three based on the fact that the safeties immediately drop back. That's very differently than in a cover four where the safeties walk down to the line immediately after the ball is hiked and react immediately to the run. As you see on this next play here, they are immediately close closing down. The only players that drop back in a cover four, as long as you don't guess pass, if you guess pass, it'll change all this and the safeties will drop back. But if you don't guess pass, you'll notice that only the cornerbacks drop back, which makes cover four still a play that can be beat outside when it comes to run plays. But inside when it comes to run plays, these safeties will drop down and will make plays. As you can see, we get a much better defensive look on the next play. So while cover twos are definitely weaker on the inside because of how the safeties react, they're going to be stronger on the outside based on how the corners react. So you'll see on this next play here, this cornerback, because he plays down to the zone, will immediately get down outside to basically prevent anybody from running outside of him and basically control that lane. So with that being said, cover twos are very weak up the middle, but they're a lot stronger outside against outside runs. So if somebody's running a stretch, somebody's running a toss, anything like that this is going to be one of the better ways to stop those outside runs so next up we'll go over the yellow zones now to me there isn't a huge difference when it comes to the yellow zones they all pretty much just cover uh, within about five to ten yards unless you send it to deeper depths they all cover about five to ten yards and uh, you know basically patrol a very small area uh, which they'll typically follow a lot of times the three rack hook is probably the best one I'll go over that in a minute but ultimately whether it's a cover three which is a hook curl here or a cover two where they're going to be something called a vert hook. It's pretty much the exact same thing. So now we're going to go over the flats. When it comes to cover three, there's really two different types. There's the seam flat and the curl flat. The seam flat is more often found in cover three matching principles, where the curl flat is found in something where it does match like the cover three sky. Ultimately, the curl flat is just going to play back further, where the seam flat is going to cover the flats uh, a little bit more like a man coverage. So on a play like this, which you've been using pretty much this entire our video uh, we're pretty much going to set the exact same concept you're going to see how uh, different routes are going to get open ultimately on a play like this where i have a matching principle it's going to take away that short route first uh, in, with the curl flat. So while this particular defense does a much better job of taking away flats than any of the other defenses we showed so far, it's going to be more susceptible
susceptible to deep passing routes based off the fact that the curl flat does not drop back to undercut these receivers. So that's pretty much the difference between your seam flat and your curl flat, which you'll see in regular cover three sky, where now, you know, based off of the fact that we're gonna be playing a little bit deeper, you'll see how these flats will be open more because the, the, the flats stay back deeper to take away the short routes. So now we're gonna to go to cover three sky. You're gonna see how the curl flats are gonna do a much better job of dropping back and taking away the deeper routes. So let the underneath stuff go, but the deeper routes won't be there as much. As you can see now, they react much better to the, uh, the deep corner route. That's the same when it comes to cover four as well, whether you're in cover four uh, quarters, which is once again going to be the quarter flats, or cover four drop, which is once again going to be the curl flat. Curl flats are going to take away the deeper routes, quarter flats are going to take away the shorter routes, they're going to match. Now we're going to go over cover two. This particular defense has three different types of outside uh, flats. Ultimately, if you come out in something like this, which is a cover two sink, you have the option of all three. The soft squat is gonna be a good mid-tier cover. This is something that can man match, and it's also something that can basically undercut short routes. Pretty much all these coverages are gonna be able to do that with the exception of hard flats. The hard flat, all you gotta do is do an underneath coverage adjustment, and you'll see how this will essentially only cover short routes. Routes like drags, routes like flats to the running backs, uh, routes like just flats in general. So about a five to zero yard depth, the hard flats will essentially just basically drop down anything and it'll let everything behind it go, which is something that can sound like a problem if you don't have the proper coverage adjustments behind it. So, you know, use hard flats somewhat sparingly based off the fact that they only do one thing. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, an over the top adjustment, which would be a cloud flat, this is gonna be similar, but in a very different uh, perspective, a very different opposite end of the spectrum. Ultimately, cloud flats will just cover everything deep. They won't really cover anything short, um, you know, which is something that obviously you're gonna want. So let's go ahead and let's show uh, real quick. We'll do the exact same play we've been using and we'll see how here the cloud flats are just gonna completely band in underneath. You can see we still have that about, you know, five to 10 yard uh, separation based on the fact that the cloud flats um, you know, basically just drop back and leave everything underneath. If I go to the hard flat, which is like I said, this one here is probably just going to take away uh, the running back and the flat route. You can see they just drop right on that and they just leave a lot of, uh, you know, space outside. As you can see, we get an easy one play touchdown. So that's why I said hard flats, you got to be careful because you can give up big plays based on the fact that the cornerbacks only react to short routes. Now the one thing that the soft squad does that none of these other coverages do is it'll really cover like a man coverage if there's no uh, route concept in play. Like right here, we don't have uh, that flat anymore. So you'll see how it will really uh, draw back in a lot of ways. We'll go ahead and we'll uh, run this play. You can see how here it's gonna completely man match to that RB route, which is very helpful. That's the only real zone that does that. Obviously the hard flat won't, but we'll go ahead, we'll go to the over the top coverage and we'll set that up the exact same way. And you'll see it won't match. It'll basically just drop back, but it still won't follow. So ultimately the best out of all the cover two zone options is going to be um, is going to be the one that we have right now, which is the soft squat. That man matching coverage ability is something that you can't find in any other uh, cloud flat or any other flat. Now, if I were to rank pass defenses, I would actually say that I think that cover two is probably the best when it comes to pass defense, uh, more specifically because there's not a lot of individual routes that beat cover two. You don't necessarily beat cover two with routes like I'm gonna show you next against cover three and cover four, but you beat them with concepts. Typically when it comes to cover two, you need a concept that pulls apart the safety and the cornerback to have success against those particular defenses. And it'll typically take three or more routes to do that when it comes to cover two, where when I show you guys cover three, a lot of times easy, simple routes like the Y route here will have a lot of success against cover three. So on a play like this, if I reset the play and I just run it as is, the RB route's not gonna beat anybody, the A route's not gonna beat anybody like they will if I put that player on a streak. Now I can get a good you know, five yard catch and run at any point in time in the flats, unless somebody's playing hard flats, essentially the flats will be open against any single zone. Beating cover two is not something you can do with an individual route as much as you can do uh, with route concepts and with route 
um, combinations, which typically take up three or more receivers to basically get the desired effect. If I run this play like this, which is a very good cover two concept, you're going to see how essentially this receiver is not open, uh, although in reality it's a route that should be open because it's going in the direction where the cover two is weakest. Same thing can be said for the A route. I mean, I could always take a little, you know, five yards. That's something that's not necessarily going to create too explosive of an offense. So to beat cover two consistently, you pretty much have to have a route concept like this, where you have three receivers, which is one of the reasons that uh, the gun bunch is the meta, because you have three receivers on one side. Uh, you basically have one route pulling the safety back, which is the streak, one route pulling the cornerback down, which is the A route, and then this will essentially get the, the RB uh, receiver open as you can see now I have to basically bullet pass lead up the field to get over the top of the cornerback through the space that I created and this is consistent throughout if I were to switch to another play I would need a similar concept I need a streak pulling back the safety uh, a short route pulling the cornerback down which is what I have here with the running back and then once again the B route here can have success over the top but ultimately you always need some sort of uh, route concept to create that now, cover three and cover four pretty much react the exact same way when it comes to the cornerbacks on the deep outside zones. Basically, against those particular defenses, it's really going to be easiest to attack uh, them to the outside. Typically underneath, like we talked about earlier with the uh, the tight end here and with the running back, a lot of times these guys, you can see they react pretty, pretty similar to the cover two as far as how much separation I get and how much distance I get. But ultimately, you're going to have a lot less resistance uh, when it comes to uh, the, the short stuff outside based on the fact that the cornerbacks drop back so far uh, post-snap. But you can also have a lot of success with simple routes like out routes, uh, which you know take a little bit of a timing throw. But you can see even with a superstar like Von Miller out there, he still can't really get there to cover in time to something like a, dip, a simple 10-yard out route. You can also have a lot of success up the seam when it comes to uh you know cover three as you can see there's a lot of separation between the cornerback and the safety and now you can see basically we're having a lot of success with just simple streaks just as long as you have adequate spacing when it comes to cover three now the one defense that i didn't go over is cover four match now there is a huge difference when it comes to cover four match and cover four drop and you can see it slightly in the diagram you can see here we have a quarter flat compared to a curl flat uh, curl flat's like a slightly darker purple color uh, but ultimately um, you know this is really a matching concept when it comes to matching zone concepts a lot of times the uh, you know when it comes to regular cover for the deep zones really just don't want to let anything get behind them where in matching concepts they act more like man coverage to an extent uh, man coverages that are a little bit easier to exploit so anytime you have somebody in a cover four crossing routes is really going to have the most success um, there's a lot of ways to glitch these defenses out, but you can see right here, a lot of a lot of confusion based off the fact that, you know, the cornerbacks, they act like man coverages. The cornerbacks and safeties act like man coverages that can switch their assignment. So whether you're in something like a cover four quarters or a cover six, you can see you still have those matching principles. So it's important to know uh, what those particular differences are because they can obviously get you in trouble if you don't. So that's it, that's the vid. If you guys want to see more videos like this, more tip videos like this about uh, things that you never really you know, understood in Madden, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Much it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.